We are facing an unprecedented health crisis. British consultant cardiologist and public health campaigner Dr. Asim Malhotra will be highlighting the major root causes behind it. An in-depth talk about the two industries that are drivers of misinformation and ill health, big food and big pharma. So what's happened is you've had flawed science and then you've had a huge industry that's developed around that. Both food industry have made money from that flawed science. We've got a drug industry, trillion dollar industry of statins, which are cholesterol lowering drugs, right? And then that is a barrier to change as well. Because even when new science emerges, it takes a long time before it's accepted because there are very powerful industries that are making money from essentially what is now fraud. I want to say fraud is deliberate deception in order to make money and that's the big problem we have in healthcare now. 50% of all the calories consumed in the Western diet now, at least 50%, is 60% in America, is ultra processed food. Extraordinary, isn't it? Just like tobacco, you know, goes hooked on cigarettes. But actually the media would be doing a much greater service to the public if on a daily basis they would tell the public that the third most common cause of death after heart disease and cancer globally is prescribed medications what your doctor prescribes for you. No drug is completely safe. If you look at traditional vaccines, the published literature tells us the risk of a serious adverse event is one in a million. Nothing is completely safe. No drug is completely safe. But when you look at all of those things, traditional vaccines are still the safest. I was one of the first to have two doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Part of the reason for that was uh, my father, who had an exaggerated fear from COVID, said, OK, Dad, I'll have it. But I also had it under the impression that I would protect my patients. You know, for us as doctors, I've had so many vaccines in my life, but protecting my patients was more important. So I had two doses. It was a trust issue. It was a kind of, I don't feel quite right. I want to wait and see. That was very rational and, and, and reasonable to do. I couldn't conceive, Ellen, at all at all of the possibility of any harm, at all. Yeah, yeah. Not at all, because of my knowledge of traditional vaccines. A whistleblower from a prestigious institution in England called me, a cardiologist, to tell me that a group of researchers had accidentally discovered with the use of very specialized heart imaging modalities that the vaccinated people with mRNA vaccines were having inflammation of the arteries and it wasn't there in the unvaccinated. And I thought, oh. I won't bore you with all the details, but the key bit of evidence that emerged from all of that was a reanalysis of Pfizer and Moderna's original trials that, that the regulators around the world approved and was then coerced and mandated. And what they found, independent researchers with credibility published in the journal Vaccine, from the very beginning, you were more likely to suffer a serious side effect, hospitalization, disability, life-changing event from the vaccine than you were to be hospitalized with COVID. The cure is worse than the disease, but what it means is it should never have been likely, never been approved for a single human in the first place. And now we are picking up the pieces. What I've been doing with vaccine injuries is I've been patients, a lot of these is I get them on a healthy lifestyle and they tend to feel better. A lot of their symptoms improve that are similar to long COVID, fatigue and all that kind of stuff. What are you eating? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you being reasonably active? Are you controlling your stress? Mm -hmm. Are you meditating every day? Yeah. for 20 to 30 minutes. I mean, these things are really powerful. Mm -hmm. So that's what people need to focus on. The evidence is overwhelming. One, this vaccine should likely not have been given to a single human in the first place. And the problem is our regulators, who we trusted, most people trust, mm -hmm. the medical regulators, they fail to do their job properly. Mm -hmm. Partly because they get most of their money from the drug industry. Mm -hmm. Yet most doctors and public don't know that. So many people who are willfully blind around the vaccine, don't want to talk about it, are living in a delusion mm -hmm. that this vaccine is safe and effective. Yeah. It's not safe, it's definitely not effective. We have to be better at making sure the way we communicate with them comes from a place of compassion and empathy mm -hmm. and not from a place of ego or I told you so. Mm -hmm. And that means helping them understand that there is a psychological barrier here and understand that they, why they are fearful and walk them through it slowly. But what people need to understand is it's even less safe not to speak the truth mm -hmm. because the problem isn't going to go away and it's only going to get bigger and become even more difficult to overcome. If a doctor can't speak the truth or is afraid to speak the truth when it comes to their patients, what has medicine become? Yeah. The title of doctor disappears. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I speak, I can't sleep at night knowing what I know, but I also say, well, I don't deserve the title of being a doctor. Spread the message, spread the word and realize that we're all doing this together. We're fighting for humanity here. We're fighting for our children. 
And I think we're at a tipping point. This is where the bubble, this corporate tyrannical bubble is about to burst. A captivating talk about two major industries that influence our health with Dr. Asim Malhotra. He calls himself a spiritual activist nowadays and has a hopeful message. We can free ourselves from corporate tyranny. What do you think?